routine transatlantic flight, one of many flown daily without incident. But although the risks are extremely small, cabin crew must always be prepared for the situation to change suddenly. From the moment their passengers board the aircraft, the crew should make a mental assessment of them. Pick out those who'd be useful to them in an emergency, and equally those who might cause them special problems. For the cabin crew can never know when an emergency may suddenly arise. If an emergency does develop, the cabin service officer will be told at once. Your CSO report to the flight deck immediately. Excuse me, Merlin. Cabin crew should move discreetly to their alert stations. The captain will That's brief the, the CSO for it. We're going to have to ditch in about 30 minutes time on the nature of the emergency and on the action to be taken. PA shortly, and then you can go ahead with your briefings after that. But now I'd like you to go and start briefing the other members of the cabin crew. The CSO will then brief door cabin crew in an all attendance call and the crew should respond in door number order. Two left. Four left. Three right. I'm afraid we have an emergency situation. We're going to have to ditch in about half an hour. Start securing the cabin now, but do it discreetly and don't alarm the passengers. Two left. Understood. The door crew should acknowledge their instructions right. and pass them on to their colleagues. It's going to be a ditching, so leave that and we'll go and turn the camera. Right. They should then check that the doors are set to automatic. And at door three, the off-wing slide must be deactivated. All cabin crew should begin to tidy up their zones, stowing trolleys and collecting rubbish but without alarming the passengers. Then, at the appropriate time, the captain will give the order for final preparations to be made. CSO, one left. And Keith, this is the captain again. Would you get the cabin crew to their positions now, and I will speak to the passengers. Right, sir. Cabin crew, take cabin positions. Cabin crew should collect their life jackets and go to pre-arranged positions where they can be seen by passengers. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain speaking. We have an emergency on our hands, which may make it necessary to put the aircraft down on the water in about 20 minutes time. The forecast sea conditions are for calm weather and with the equipment we have on board we should not be faced with any undue difficulties. You will shortly be told what to do. Listen carefully and follow the cabin crew's instructions. Passenger reaction is hard to predict but the presence and confident direction of the cabin crew will have a calming effect. Sit down. The CSO will then take over. Return to your seats. Sit down. Return to your seats. Wherever possible, the CSO should tell passengers to take off ties and loosen collars. Remove sharp objects from their pockets. Take off their glasses and place them in the seat pocket for retrieval after landing. Remove high heel shoes. and put on any warm clothing. To enable him to supervise cabin preparation, the CSO can use the pre-recorded announcement. This details the essential points. Extinguish all cigarettes. Your life jacket is under your seat. Remove it and put it on, but do not, I repeat, 
Do not inflate it inside the aircraft. No, no. Sit down. Put your seat back upright. Table stowed. Armrest down. Then fasten your seat belt tightly. Cabin crew should check that all these things are being done. Some passengers may need help. Many will be able to help each other. A little cord underneath, which you can attach to your own life jacket. It's safer. Um, you Some able-bodied passengers will have to be repositioned next to those who will need help before, during, and after the landing. Why, well, certainly. Don't forget your seat belts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jane, thank you. At doors three, life rafts are stowed in a ceiling compartment and able-bodied passengers should be briefed to help with them and with the survival packs. Survival pack comes off, which is important. We have to keep that because that has to go in the life raft. What's in it then? Things like uh, barley sugar, tins of water and also signaling equipment. Also at doors three, the use of the escape rope should be explained to two other passengers. If for any reason the crew member isn't available after the landing, one of them will have to attach the rope to the wing anchorage point. Let's get it out there. I want it tied onto your waist tapes like that. Make sure it's secure, okay? It's for everybody to uh, hold on to as they go out to the life rafts. Put it on. Okay. As you feel, it's very okay. good. Meanwhile, all movable objects in the cabin must be stowed in the luggage bins. And these must be firmly shut. Even small loose items can be a serious danger in an emergency landing. Hand baggage can be placed in the toilets and the doors should be locked from the outside. Water containers should be filled and stowed. And the galley itself secured with the power switched off. Any available blankets and pillows should be distributed to passengers. The blankets will be valuable in the rafts and the pillows will be useful as part of the brace procedure. Cabin crew should ensure that all passengers understand right, this procedure. Yes, yes, I already did that. And put your knees together yeah. and your feet forward. Next, hold in your legs tightly with your arm, yeah. one arm. And we'll put a pillow over the top of that. Yeah. When you hear the instructions, brace, brace over the PA, you put your head down on your pillow yeah. and hold your head in tightly with your other arm, okay? Hold and yourself in like a ball. No, not like that. Hold your head, not your neck. Hold oh, your head. Right. And when they say brace, I go down? Yes. Do you understand uh, that? Yes. Thank you. All cabin crew should then check that their zones are absolutely secure and passengers prepared. I'm sorry, you'll have to take off your glasses. But I can't see without my glasses. Well, I'm very sorry, but they will be dangerous on impact. The cabin lighting should then be dimmed. When satisfied that their zones are ready, door crew should report to their purser. Four left here. All cabin preparation complete. Door in automatic. Door three right. All cabin preparation complete. Door in automatic. Off wing slide deactivated. Purser aft. Two left here. All cabin preparation complete. Door in automatic. Door three left. The purser, in turn, will report to the CSO. Right, thank you. Captain here. CSO one left here, sir. All cabin preparation complete. Right, thank you very much indeed. I'll keep you advised. Thank you.
2,000 feet to go. Feet. Cabin crew, take your seats for landing. On this instruction, cabin crew should return quickly to their own seats and strap in. They've now done as much as they can to ensure the safety of their passengers. For the time being, the situation is out of their hands. Three hundred feet. Two hundred feet. Brace, brace. Fifty feet, thirty feet. When the order to evacuate is given, provided all is well outside the aircraft, the doors must be quickly opened. At doors three, this causes the ramp to inflate, with the off-wing slide deactivated. The life raft must be secured to the door hinge by its inflation line. A sharp tug on the line inflates the raft. The raft inflates upside down, it can be righted by pulling on the straps on the underside of the floor. The passengers must then board the rafts as quickly as possible. Right, everybody out. The cabin crew must take control, giving positive instructions and reminding passengers to inflate their life jackets as they leave the aircraft. Survival equipment should be handed into the rafts. Cabin crew should check that their zones are clear and then board the rafts themselves. Some survivors may fall in the water. A crew member should take charge of each raft and direct their rescue. A ramp is provided at one side of the raft for boarding from the water. There are ladders at the upper side. These are more difficult to climb, but quite possible for the able-bodied. Any non-swimmers can be retrieved by means of a rescue quoit carried in the floor of the life raft. And they can be hauled in on the line to which the quoit is attached. Oh. 
When the last of the survivors is safely aboard, the raft must be cut free from the aircraft. For this, a knife is carried on the canopy of the raft. Should the aircraft sink, the inflation line would snap before the raft could be pulled under. Crew members will have to decide their own priorities depending on the conditions in their own raft. We've got a leak. Damage to the structure of the raft right. must be repaired immediately. Repair kit. The raft's equipment bag contains a repair kit, leak stoppers and a clamp. The crew member will have to decide on the appropriate repair. The pump is also carried in the equipment bag and this can be used to reinflate the damaged flotation chamber once the repair has been completed. This is a job that can be delegated to one of the survivors, releasing the crew member for other jobs. A pair of glove paddles are carried in each raft. These can be used to maneuver the raft over short distances. It's important to tie as many rafts as possible together to prevent their drifting far apart. This simplifies the subsequent rescue operations and produces a bigger target for the searchers to find. For safety, the line connecting the rafts should be at least 25 feet long. The drogue or sea anchor carried in each raft should then be deployed in the water to reduce drifting. Having ensured the safety of his raft, the crew member can turn to the needs of his survivors. The first aid kits contain the basic dressings and bandages needed to deal with minor injuries and also sedatives. There are painkillers and heart stimulants for more serious conditions. The survivors will look to the crew member for leadership and reassurance and he'll need to keep up their morale. To begin with, he can keep them busy drying out the inside of the life raft. The equipment bag contains sponges and there's a cup baler in the survival pack. For more serious flooding, the pump can be used as a baling tool. With raft and survivors secure, the crew member can set about attracting the attention of the rescue services. The radio beacon should be attached to one of the raft's lines and deployed in the water. There are other devices in the raft for attracting attention at shorter range and passengers can be made responsible for these. The heliograph is one such device, simply a mirror for reflecting the sun in the direction of passing ships or aircraft. Mini flares are carried both in the equipment bag and in the survival pack. Sea markers are carried to make the survivor's position more noticeable from the air. Again, their use can be entrusted to one of the survivors. To reduce risks of exposure and flooding, the curtain in the canopy can be closed, leaving just a small gap at the top for ventilation. There's a rain catchment in the canopy, 
and containers in the raft to store any rain that falls. But in any case, the survival pack has adequate supplies of water and glucose to sustain a full load of survivors until help arrives. The raft may be uncomfortable and cramped, but it is stable and safe, a more than adequate shelter. And with modern communications and rescue facilities, the survivors shouldn't have too long to wait. <laughs>